What I would like to do tonight is to compare financial systemic risk with disaster generated by natural hazards. But why so? I mean, is it meaningful, the comparison? Is it something we can learn to go beyond our limits? Or is just another rhetorical question to, you know, say that finance is a disaster, the world is messed up? Well, I spend quite a lot of time thinking about systemic risk. Please don't judge me. But, and I think that a volcanic eruption that destroyed Roman settlements approximately 2,000 years ago has much to share with the failure of one of the largest financial institutions, Lehman Brothers, for instance, that actually failed in 2008, sending shockwaves around the world, the world economies. These events are part of our lives. These events are part of the history that led us today where we are. In fact, in my case, actually, uh, when I was uh, teaching law in Milan, I experienced an earthquake. I mean, literally, you know, it's not a metaphor. I was talking to my students and, you know, the projector started to shake a bit, the uh, ground trembled mildly, nothing dangerous or scary, but enough to make my student, you know, look at me, say, is that part of the lecture? Should I take notes about it? And of course I told them, yes, it's absolutely part of lecture. I made that for you. This is what I call innovative teaching. <laughs> I tried to arrange something similar tonight, but you know, they told me no, so you know, <laughs> yeah, at least I tried. But you know, before going on what is systemic risk, let's start from the beginning. I've heard it's a good place to start. So what is risk? What do we mean when we talk about risk? That's the key question. Well, sometimes we think about risk as something bad that can happen to us something random that we bump into, hopefully we don't bump into, some other times is, uh, an, active, is an active uh, uh, decision making, uh, is an active choice we make in our, uh, 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 when we take decisions. It's something we consider as very risky, something we have to be careful to, Anyway, something dangerous. But what I'm telling you is that uh, aside from the danger, there are also opportunities attached to risk. In fact, actually, risk and opportunities are two sides of the same coin. In other words, if an event happens, we might actually gain from it rather than losing. To explain this point, I really like to rely on the words of a very wise man. And of course, uh, I'm talking about uh, Forrest Gump. So, uh, <laughs> life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Which means that in this box of chocolates, there are dangers and opportunities. Which also means that zero risk is impossible. Zero risk will imply to do not engage with life at all. Or it will imply to not eat chocolate because of the risk of eating something we don't fancy, we don't like. But that's not an option. It's not an option, life without risk or without chocolate. Let's be serious, folks. So, <laughs> so the problem is not avoiding risk but is rather managing risk. But to manage risk, we need to grasp it. We need to get what we're talking about. We need to know. We need to have a sense of what we are facing in our future. So, as a prominent, uh, this time for real, uh, uh, scholar and financial economist said, Frank Knight, risk is something that we can measure. 
Otherwise, we're dealing with uncertainties. Now, of course, in life, we have both. We have risks and uncertainties. And we need to be able to cope with both. But let's make this point clear. So if we are <coughs> play, looking at a roulette, so a roulette is a risky activity. We, in fact, we don't know the outcome, but we can assign different probabilities to each and every outcome. We can measure it. If we think uh, instead uh, about uh, a wonderful uh, technological breakthrough that is changing our life for good and the way we uh, interact among each other, we're, we're dealing with uncertainties in the sense that we don't know the outcome of that. We're dealing with the black swan, as Nassim Taleb, a prominent philosopher, will call it. The classical example is, for instance, the advent of internet. 20 years ago, we had no clue how the law, our life will be changed and how we will be all connected. We didn't know the outcome. So it is natural at that point to ask ourselves, what about disasters? Are those risks or uncertainties? Well, it's a bit of both. But if we look carefully and we focus on finance, we know that financial institutions can actually fail. We know that there is a possibility. We know that this thing exists, even more. We know that some financial institutions, sufficiently interconnected, sufficiently large, when they fail, they might send shock waves around the world. <laughs> but this is not a new thing. It's pretty much something that we knew <coughs> since the beginning of finance, especially international finance. So what about disasters? I mean, if we can say that finance is prone to certain kind of risks, large risks, systemic risks, what about disasters? Well, we know that certain areas are more prone to risks than others. We know that certain geographical areas, like in this case, this is a picture of uh, Eureka Matthew, hitting the uh, uh, um, Central American coast a few days ago. But let's look at Italy, my own country. So Italy is not that far away, and yet it's full of possible <coughs> natural extreme events. Well, we have the rise of the sea level that is compromising Venice, floating. We have earthquakes. Actually, last night, there was an earthquake that actually shook Rome and destroyed some other towns. Even more, last summer, some beautiful towns in, the, in central Italy, in the mountains, have been destroyed. This is Amatrice, and that's what it remains of Amatrice. There were many victims. The number of victims has been limited by the emergency response. An emergency response that it was designed before that happened. So the work of volunteers and public authorities limited by following some specific plans the impact of such event. Now more can be done, much more can be done. In fact, there is a debate on how, well, we have the technology, but how to make sure that all ancient buildings are able to absorb earthquakes and large shocks. The key point is not anymore risk management. For sure it's not risk avoidance, we cannot avoid nature. It's risk resilience. We have to make local communities Resilient to risk. And one of the key factors to do that is precisely education. Education in the sense of spreading knowledge. 
Knowledge about those risks. Learn about those risks. Knowing that these things exist and what to do and what not to do. So that when professionals or uh, uh, public authorities arise, actually there is a, a chance that they find more people and more towns actually still standing on their feet. So we have to bounce back. That's the idea. Not avoid, not manage, bounce back. But if we can think about those risks, if we know they exist, so we're talking about systemic risk and to some extent we can manage them, conceive them, how do we understand them for real? How, how those things really happen? What is our way of thinking about it? Well, let's go back 2,000 years. And let's see, for instance, how Romans were thinking about Pompeii. We're thinking about the volcano nearby their own settlement. Pompeii is a port, was a port town. This is what it remains. And it was a poor town of 20,000 people, approximately, that has been destroyed by the eruption of this volcano. But yet, they live nearby. So what, was, how, what were the tools that they've been using to understand whether there was a, a risk for their settlement? Well, they did not have fancy technologies. They did not have even knowledge about a certain a volcanic event or geophysical events. They use divinatory <coughs> practice. They used to read the liver of that animals. I know it's gross, but it was very popular. To actually try to understand what the future holds. They were looking at signs in nature was very common in ancient civilizations. So they were looking at birds to understand whether there was a bad or a good omen. Did it work? No. It didn't work. But you see, now we have a new form of technology. Now we are able to understand the distribution of these events. Now we have uh, new fantastic abilities to actually understand the reality in front of us and try to understand what the future holds for us, and in particular risk. And funny enough, by using a distribution that looks like a volcano, by the way, uh, we are trying to understand the frequency and the impact of certain events. So, for instance, the systemic risks, the thing I'm talking about, are defined as tail risks. Because in that curve, they are at the tail end. Uh, meaning that they are low frequency, high impact. And if we go in finance, actually, we're even better. We have charts. You can do everything with charts. And those charts are made by looking at previous events, at the past, to understand the future. Funny. But wait, we have computers as well. Computers that are calculating tons of data to understand what the future will hold for us. Did it work? Not really. <laughs> now, I know that after an event, uh, it's very easy to create a narrative, to see things, oh, finally makes sense. But I guess my point is that here in finance, it's time to get real. <coughs> it's time to get real and think about resilience. Think about how to make the financial system in our society more resilient. What does it mean? Well, first of all, it means that we don't have to try to manage those events. 
We don't have to try to avoid those events, but we have to try to know more. We have to acknowledge that we are part of the system that ultimately generates a possible disaster. And as such, we are not affected by the, by the disaster alone, but we are also affected and affecting the system in which the disasters occur. For instance, we can start to know where our money is going, or where it comes from, or what to do in case of a financial shock. Basic thing. So we have to know what we don't know. And this, in my opinion, is going beyond the limits. Thank you.